So it's my pleasure to be here on the last night of Black History Month 2015 to celebrate the extraordinary contributions of black women to our wonderful community and to our country. From new immigrants to those whose roots Canada, in Canada go back many generations, black women have played important roles in our city's history and they will continue to play important roles in our city's future. Let me take a moment to congratulate your organization on this important work. With chapters throughout Ontario, the Congress of Black Women of Canada empowers black women to address the issues affecting them and in doing so improves the quality of lives and those of their families. What better time to start the countdown than International Women's Day 2015? Did everybody know that next week is that? Yeah. yeah. Each year on March 8th, we celebrate women in all of their diversity in Canada and throughout the world. March 8th is a day that highlights women's extraordinary contributions, past and present, in all fields of endeavor. And looking ahead, it also provides an opportunity to celebrate women's enormous potential for positive change in the future in all parts of society. Canada's theme for International Women's Day is Strong Women, Strong World, Improving Economic Opportunities for All. This theme points to the vital contributions that women make every day to the domestic and global economies. It also serves as a reminder that every woman deserves the chance to create prosperity for herself and her family. Whether it's an employee, a professional, a business leader, or a team member, or an entrepreneur. That's why our government is committed to promoting economic opportunities for all Canadians, including women. <music> women make up over 50% of the population. Did you know that? Hmm. Over 50% of the population is women, and post-secondary students, 62% of women graduate. So it's very good to pay tribute to the many great women out there. It reflects one of our government's key priorities, ensuring a healthy economy by creating jobs and opportunities for Canadians. So let's consider some important facts about women in Canada's economy. Women-owned businesses currently employ over 1.5 million Canadians. Evidence shows that women business leaders tend to hire women and that women-led companies invest in their local communities. These statistics confirm what we know is true. Women-led businesses are critical to Canada's economic success. As Parliamentary Secretary of the Status of Women, I often say that in our country, when women succeed, Canada succeeds. I'm sure we'll all agree that Canada is far better off when the talent and skills of women are fully represented throughout our economy, from skilled trades, technical professions, and to small businesses and corporate boardrooms. Yet we have learned that from the workplace to the boardroom, diversity doesn't happen by itself. That's why supporting women's economic advancement is a priority for me and for our government. One way to do this is by supporting women entrepreneurs. The Minister for Status of Women has established an expert panel on championing and mentorship for women entrepreneurs. The expert panel is identifying innovative best practices for mentoring women entrepreneurs. She took this step because she knows firsthand the difference that having a champion and a mentor can make. And I have to say that uh, when I went across uh, Canada to, to some different provinces, on uh, we hosted roundtables, and every time it always came up mentorship on, on the when I had women entrepreneurs at the roundtable, because they need someone sometimes that they can ask a question to, or um, sometimes when they're starting the business, but sometimes even when they've had the business for a year or so, because they you know something's going wrong, or maybe you know it's financial, there's no cash flow, and you know they just need that person that they can say, okay, what am I doing wrong? And so mentorship was huge. As many of you know, our government also believes we can make progress by closing the gender gap on corporate boards and in leadership positions. Last June, we released the report on the Advisory Council of Leaders from the private sector promoting increased participation of women on boards. One of its key recommendations is for public and private sector boards in Canada to aspire to fill 30% of their seats with women over the next five years. It also has a roadmap for making these happen. So we also did um, um, uh, you know, roundtables on for women on boards too, and and you know we basically it was determined that you know we didn't want to mandate people to put uh, women on boards because I mean women are p totally fully qualified to get there on their own. But at least if if um, you know we say you know we would like thirty percent of women on boards, then um, you know if Bell does it, 
then you know Rogers and Telus is going to do it because you know it, it. You know, women make a big decision and they buy. Like they're they're big buyers and and, and purchasers of things and decision makers. So you know, if, if Bell has thirty percent and Rogers and Telus don't, you know, they're going to want to make sure they do as well. And studies have proven that when women are in boards, when you have, um, I think it's actually like the minimum is twenty percent. When you have women on boards, profits actually increase uh, for that company by, I think it's 18%. Profits rise 18% when there's women on boards. So, you know, it, it just goes to show you about the diversity and the different mind thinking of when you have them on boards. We are proud of these effects to affect the change at the boardroom level and hope they inspire new thinking in corporate Canada. This initiative complements outgoing efforts by Status of Women Canada to create new economic opportunities for women. In fact, since 2007, we've invested over $60 million in projects to improve women's economic security and prosperity. For example, in 2014, we issued a call for proposals on the theme, Economic Prosperity, Positioning Women for Success. The projects chosen in those three areas, uh, that, that, that were chosen, fell into three areas. Increasing or strengthening economic opportunities for entrepreneurial and professional women. Advancing women in various sectors through mentorship and sponsorship and collaborating to advance women's financial preparedness. All will engage key stakeholders, institutions, employers, sector and professional organizations and local communities and all will address institutional barriers and other factors hindering progress on women's autom autonomy. Now that was a call for proposal last year so sometimes you can still apply for different funding again I'll get to that um, but then other times the minister will put out a specific call for proposals so that one was um, that one was for entrepreneurs. You know, we've done one for mentorship. We've done one for um, you know date rape on campuses, on, on post secondary campuses. So it just depends on on um, you know what call that happens to be there at the time. So now let's talk about women in politics. That's something else we're doing. Women in politics, uh, as I said, are, they're over 50 50 percent of the population are women, and 62 percent of them are graduates. And in our most recent election in 2011, Canadians elected a record number of women to Parliament. So in all of the Parliament, 76 are women, which is 25%. The previous election was 69, so it did increase. The number reflects a steady rise since 1979, when the number of women MPs had reached 10 for the very first time. Prime Minister Harper is very supportive of promoting women to key positions in our party. We have 28 women, so in our party, in the Conservative Party, we have 28 women, and of the 28, 12 are cabinet ministers, and 5 are parliamentary secretaries. So 17 women out of the 28 have a key role in the government, which is really good. And, and actually, uh, it's 32%, I think, is, is, the num is the percentage with the women cabinet ministers, which is the highest level ever in the history of parliament for women in cabinet positions. And they're not junior cabinet positions. There's uh, health, Minister of Health, Rhonda Ambrose, Public Works is Diane Finley, um, Carrie Lynn Finley is Revenue, Canada Revenue, CRA. Uh, they're very, you know, very uh, strong um, positions and of course the Minister for Status of Women also has the Minister of Labour. So they're really good positions and uh, they contribute a lot for the government. As Senators, there's 38 out of 104, so they're not doing too bad either. This is one of when you may, when, can speak. This is one of many ways that Status of Women Canada supports action to advance equality between women and men in the economic, social, and democratic life in Canada. Since 2011, we've approved $153 million in grants and contributions to projects that tackle the most challenging issues facing women and girls today. Ending gender-based violence, gaining economic security, and participating in our communities. Our new online system makes it easier than ever for organizations serving women and girls to apply for the funding. And I went on the website. I like going on the website. And, and uh, it is very easy to navigate around. Some other websites, not so much. This one's really good. We've added a new feature to the Status of Women Canada website called Success Stories. These are women's program funded projects that are having a lasting impact on their social communities and also providing inspiration and best practices to groups across countries. So that might be worth going on as well. So now we'll get to violence against women and girls. Every day, everywhere, women are beaten, raped, and killed just because they are women. 
And let me be clear, in, viol in Canada, violence against women and girls is against the law and is not tolerated. And when I am speaking at the Canadian citizenship ceremonies, I always like to, to remind people that are getting their Canadian citizenship that, that uh, you know, it may be okay in your country, where, you know, but it's not okay here. Now, some of the, most of the majority of the people have been here probably a minimum of three years that are getting their Canadian citizenship, but I always like to remind them because, uh, you know, sometimes in their, you know, in the countries, as we all know, it's, it's okay in one place, but it's not okay here. And, you know, we're all about protecting the women and girls. Intimate partner violence accounts for an estimated 25% of all police reported crime, violent crime. These incidents serve as a constant reminder that for many women and girls, violence and the threat of violence are daily realities which cause untold damage on individual families and communities. Our economy suffers as well. The economic cost of spousal violence against women alone are estimated at 4.8 billion per year. If progress is to be made, everyone, men, women, boys and girls, need to be part of the solution. For its part, the Government of Canada has taken significant actions to make our communities safer for women and girls. And I you know, just want to point out too, uh, another part of our project, um, which maybe was in the last year, year and a half, was also engaging men and boys. I mean, we could spend millions of dollars on violence against women and girls, but if the boys and men aren't on board, nothing is ever going to change, ever, ever. And uh, when Ron Ambrose was Minister for Status of Women, she had a really good project that uh, she funded. Now, partnerships are everything. The government likes funding things that when, when communities are involved in partnerships. So this particular organization was applying for funding, working with the BC Lions, and uh, the BC Lions would go out, certain, certain uh, BC Lion football team, would go out and speak to the boys at schools. So it was, it's a really good program, engages the boys, and now there's one going on with the Toronto Argonauts. If progress is to be made, every, everyone, men and women, girls and boys, need to be part of the solution. Our government has also passed the Safe Streets and Communities Act to improve safety for all Canadians. We launched the National Action Plan to combat human trafficking and increase penalties for violent crimes, kidnapping, murder, sexual assault. We, we, we increased the penalties, made it tougher, tougher sentences so that they're not out in three years. Like if they're doing the, the crime, they should be doing the time. So we've changed all that actually in the last couple of years. Surprisingly, actually, the opposition parties, both of them, have both voted against it. So. Uh, you know, I'm not sure why, but you know, I, you know, I'm just happy that you know there's tougher crimes out there because there is a lot of crime, and most of it's against women and girls. In fact, since 2007, the government of Canada has provided more than 62 million dollars in funding through Status of Women for projects that end violence against women and girls. Globally, the promotion and protection of women's human rights will continue. It'll continue to be central for our government, and when the world looks at Canada, they see a leader in the fight against early enforced marriage. We've we've took the lead on that one too. Um, did you know that in, we've, we're just going through this uh, for ch you know changing this? We're changing it in with a, a citizenship and immigration. That in order for a girl to be married, she has to be at least 16, and you can't have two wives. And like so, we're changing all that now through the immigration process. But did you know there was actually no real law here in Canada, and that you could be as as young as seven years old and, and be forced to marry, you know, someone. So think about that if you have daughters. Um, uh, same thing actually uh, in, with, on, uh, with honor killings we, we've also took the lead on in the fight against honor killings and in the fight to end violence against women and girls One